Oh, not too bad. 83. Stop. Yes. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Oh man, I thought I lo lost a load of weight. 83 kilos, you see that? So I'm going uh, tracking all this stuff in uh, the app that we have. So we're going to do neck, waist, hips, arms, thighs, calves. Shoulders, shoulders, do shoulders, do shoulders, we'll do chest, four arms, yeah, four arms. Uh, and then for the skin folds, it's pec, Abdomen, super iliac, so here, some scap on the back here. We've got axilla, and we've got thigh, isn't it? Triceps. Thigh and triceps, triceps as well. So I've done my body composition side of things and I'm tracking them all in the app that we use. So here are my measurements. Take it was in focus, there we go. And what is beautiful about this is if I click on any one of these so I can click on hips, it charts it for me. I also did calipers, so you can see there there's a body fat percentage. Now that's quite low and what we typically find with the equation that's used on this is that it comes in a little bit lower than we think. So like, I don't think my body fat is 5.8%. You can see that 5.8%. I don't think it's that low. It is low. It's probably sub 10%, but it's, you know, it's, it's definitely not 5.8%. But that doesn't really matter. What matters is what direction it, it goes. So obviously I don't want that going from five to 10. I want to try and keep it in around that 5% mark according to this equation. And similarly, I can click on that body fat percentage and I can see how that's changed. And you can actually see it's gone up to 5.8 from 5.26. Is that right? 5.26. Okay, so that's one really useful thing about the app. Being able to track all that data and keep it somewhere safe. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my functional screen. So I'm going to do a series of movements here on the camera and I'm just going to talk you through them, why I'm doing them and what that means then for my program. Now anyone who's done our online programs will know this test. This is the same test we do with people online. So it's something you can do yourself and I'm going to give you a few pointers based on how you get on. First one is a deep squat. I'm setting up here like so, feet shoulder with a part, toes pointing forward. I'm putting this pole on top of my head like this with a 90 degree angle at my elbows and then I'm straightening my arms. What I'm trying to do is keep the pole as far back as possible. So up here like this and then squatting down as low as I can. And what we're looking for is we're looking for that pole. We're looking for that pole to be over the middle of our foot and we're looking to get our hips below our knees. And depending on what that looks like, and I'll have a look back at it in a minute myself. It'll tell me how, how, how well I scored in the test. You need a lot of ankle range motion and you need a good amount of hip flexor range motion to do well in this test. So if you find that you're not able to do it and you find that you're falling forwards or if the pole comes way out in front, raise your heels. So do the exact same thing with your heels up in a box and then see how you are. And you can see I'm perfectly upright there. No problems there. Or it's here. Oh, I'm just tipping forward ever so slightly. Okay, so in order to improve that, uh, if you were very poor on that, you'd work a lot on your ankle range of motion and possibly a hip flexor, excuse me, hip flexor range of motion if those were tight. Okay, next one is an active straight leg raise. So we're just lying down on the ground, keeping our legs and our knees locked out. Lifting up one leg up as high as we can, back down. Keeping those knees locked out, lift the other leg up as high as we can, back down. And what you're looking for is for that leg to be vertical up in the air. If you can't get it straight up in the air, you probably need to work on your hamstring flexibility. All right, next one is for hip flexors. The quickest way to do this is just set up like so, 90 degrees at this knee here. Uh, try and keep your body nice and upright. Try and keep your hip, your knee, and your shoulders in line. And then grab a hold of the back leg and try and pull it towards your arse. So you can see there, I can get my back leg towards my arse and I can keep myself fairly upright, okay? If this is really challenging, 
and you feel a really good stretch here, you probably need to work on those hip flexors. Next thing we can do then is for shoulders. So I need you to put your hands out like this, tuck your thumbs in, make a fist in both hands, and they go one over, one under, and try and touch them off each other. And you should be able to get them within a, a palm's reach or within a hand's reach of each other. So if you want to test it and see how close you are, see if you can do that. And if you can touch your fingers together, you're doing pretty well. If you're not touching your fingers together, it could be because of a couple of different reasons. One of the reasons could be because you need to work on your thoracic spine. So this is a test we can do for our thoracic spine. Sit in against the wall. Tuck your feet in, try and get your butt in as far as you can. Now, we're not necessarily looking for a stretch on the groin, so you can kind of cross your feet like this, okay? But try and get your butt in as, as far as you can. Try and get your elbows and wrists against the wall, pressing your lower back against the wall, and then go all the way up, all the way down. All the way up, all the way down. If you struggle with that and find that you have a big round here in your lower back, and this really rounds, or if your arms come way off the wall, you probably need to work on your thoracic spine. So we'll be doing a lot of uh, T-spine wall slides. I'll mention those in the program or T-spine rotations or even just this exercise itself. This is a T-spine wall slide. When you go up and down like that and you should feel pressure in between your shoulder blades. That will help you get your shoulder blade into a better position so that you can get your arm behind your body and up here behind your back. So the last test I'm gonna show you is a knee to wall test and this is the measure ankle range of motion. Basically, what you want to measure is the distance between your toe and the wall. Now, there's a skirting board there of about two centimeters. And I want to drive my knee in to touch off the wall without my heel coming off the ground. Okay? And then I can, if I can do it there, I move back a little bit. And if my heel starts to come off the ground like it does here, you can see that heel coming off the ground, I've gone too far, so I need to move a little bit closer. Okay? So mine's just coming off the wall there. Just about there, and I'd measure that distance. Now what we're looking for, what we're looking for is at least 10 centimeters. If it's less than 10 centimeters, you need to work on your ankle range motion, so you need to stretch your soleus. And you're looking for a stretch back here. Sometimes you can get a bony block in front, so if you feel pressure in the front of the ankle, try and drive your knee inwards or outwards when you're doing a soleus stretch, and that might give you more of a stretch at the back. Sometimes the bony block will permanently restrict your ankle range motion and there's nothing you can do about it. But what you can do is wear a pair of weightlifting shoes or put some kind of wedge underneath your heels like it did with that deep squat test and that will help improve your squat, keep your back more upright. Okay, so that's the functional screen. I would recommend you do that, either record yourself or get your friend to have a look at you. And if you struggle with the deep squat and have poor ankle range motion, do a deep squat hold and a soleus stretch you can look those up on Fit100HQ, the YouTube page on our exercise database. If you're struggling with the wall slides, do T-spine wall slides. There's a couple of different variations on the YouTube page on the Fit100HQ one. If you're struggling with the hip flexor test, do a hip flexor stretch. You can do it against a chair or against a wall. And if you're struggling with the hamstrings, there's a couple of different hamstring stretch exercises. Again, all of those are on the Fit100HQ YouTube page. Okay guys, so what you just saw was the body composition and the functional movement screening. On top of that body composition stuff that I did, those measurements, we also encourage, I also encourage all of our members to do progress pictures, or in this case, I'm gonna show you a progress video. And the reason I wanna show it to you is because again, it's something I encourage our members to do, so I wanna try and lead by example and just show people that I also track visually how my body changes. And tracking this visually is a really useful tool because a lot of times we don't notice the changes in the mirror because they're so gradual. But if we have a progress picture every month, we can look back and then we'll be able to see the difference between the two and it'll give us that little bit of encouragement and it'll help motivate us to keep going. Now I'm not a bodybuilder, I am not a physique competitor, so excuse my posing. I am trying to do a little bit of flexing just to give you an idea of what my body fat percentage is and how much muscle mass I have. That's the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like and subscribe. I am going to be down in the comment section. I will see you there or I'll see you in the next video. Slot.